All right, guys, Mr. Antonucci here. And in this video, I want to share with you the solutions to the 2021 AP Calculus AB exam from Administration One. They released these about 48 hours after the first exam. And so I want to um, go over you, go over these with you. Now, at the time of this recording, they had not yet released the answer key with the points breakdown. So at different parts in the video, I may make a comment about what my opinion would be for a certain number of points or whether they would award the point for this or that. But just know that at the time of this recording, that's not factual. It's just my assumption or opinion based upon um, over 15 years of teaching AP calculus. So let's dive in. Uh, number one, the density of a bacteria population in a circular petri dish at a distance r centimeters from the center of the dish is given by an increasing differentiable function f, where f of r is measured in milligrams per square centimeter. Values of f of r for selected values of r are given in the table above. So let's reveal question a. Use the data in the table to uh, estimate f prime of 2.25 using correct units. Interpret the meaning of your answer in the context of the problem. So two things here. They want you to give an estimate for the value of f prime of 2.25 and interpret its meaning in the context. So probably two points here, one for the value and one for the interpretation. Now, uh, for part A, f prime of 2.25. If you notice in the table, there is no 2.25 value. It's between 2 and 2.5. So the best we can do is estimate it using the two points closest to it. Now, if you remember, F prime stands for the rate of change, and that's equivalent to the slope of the tangent line of the graph of the function at that point, 2.25. Again, we don't know the function to differentiate it. All we have is this table of values. So the best we can do is get the slope of the two points nearest it. So we would do 10 minus 6. That's the change in F over 2.5 minus two, and that would give you four over 0.5, which is eight. Now, the units on this would be the units for four, which is the change in F of R, which is milligrams per square centimeter per chain, the units for 0.5, which is centimeters. So the units you could simplify to eight milligrams per cubic centimeter. Now that's not the interpretation. Be careful there. I've had students um, just report units instead of reporting the entire interpretation. I'm going to verbally speak it. I'm not going to take the time to write it all out. But this is at the, the interpretation for what F prime means. You have to interpret not only what the eight means, but in the context of the 2.25 as well. So this would be the density of the bacteria population in the Petri dish is increasing, because the rate of change is positive, is increasing at a rate of eight milligrams per centimeter cubed at 2.25 centimeters from the center of the Petri dish. Okay, all right. If you need to hear that again, just rewind the video. So problem B, uh, the total mass in milligrams of bacteria in the Petri dish is given by the integral expression two pi, definite integral from zero to four F, or excuse me, R times F of R dr. Approximate the value of that integral using a right Riemann sub with four sub intervals indicated by the data in the table. So to get the sum, two pi, definite integral from zero to four, r f of r dr you would have 2 pi times now to use a right riemann sum you go each sub interval the first sub interval is from 0 to 1 and it says um, four sub intervals so we know we're just going to go 0 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 2.5 2.5 to 4 and we're going to use the right endpoint for the first subinterval. So all you do is the width of that subinterval, one, times the right end point of that subinterval, two. And normally that's how you get a right Riemann sum. But the definite integral isn't just of f of r, it's also times r. So you have to multiply by the value of r at that right end point. 
plus the next subinterval from one to two has a width of one times a right endpoint of six times the value of r at that endpoint is two plus the next subinterval goes from two to 2.5, which is a width of 0.5 times the right endpoint, which is 10 times the R value at the right endpoint, 2.5. Plus the last subinterval, 2.5 to 4 is 1.5 times the right endpoint, 18 times the value of R, which is 4. Now, because this is on the calculator allowed portion, we can bang that all into the calculator and you would get 269 pi. And the units would be milligrams. Now, why the units are milligrams is the units for R are centimeters. The units for F of R are milligrams per square centimeter, so CM squared. And the units for dr, remember dr stands for an infinitesimally small change in r, and r is centimeters, so that'd be centimeters. And the centimeters, centimeters, divided by centimeters squared, the units would all cancel out to give you, boopity boop, just milligrams. Okay, now it didn't ask us to interpret this, it just asked us to give an approximation using a right Riemann sum. Now you could also report the decimal to three decimal places if you, um, 269 pi, um, you would have 845.00, or excuse me, 845.088 to three decimal places. You could report that as well, because again, you're allowed to use calculator on this one. Okay, C, is the approximation found in part B an overestimate or an underestimate of the total mass of bacteria in the Petri dish? Now, if you remember, a right Riemann sum is basically putting rectangles under the graph of the function at the right endpoints using the right endpoints as the height. If we were to graph this function and use the right endpoints, coupled with the information we have here that f is an increasing function, remember a right Riemann sum overestimates an increasing function. And I'll, I'll just do a little sketch here. If you had um, an increasing function, whether you increase concave down, concave up, or just without any concavity, if you just superimpose a couple right, right endpoint rectangles in there, just to show you, now this isn't a su sufficient justification by any means. I'm just showing you where this comes from. But no matter how you draw an increasing function, and even if it switches, concavity, as long as it's increasing on that interval, a right Riemann sum is going to over approximate. Now, the only hiccup, so to speak, in this is that in part B, you're not just doing a right Riemann sum for f of r, you're doing it times uh, r times f of r. Now, the reason it's still a, a over approximation is because f of r is increasing and r times f of r is still going to be an increasing function um, because all you're doing is multiplying it by the centimeters, which are all positive values still. Okay, part C, the density, or excuse me, part D, the density uh, in the Petri dish for r between one and four is modeled by the function g defined by g of r equals 2 minus 16 cosine 1.57 square root of r cubed. For what value of k, k from 1 to 4, is g of k equal to the average value of g of r in the interval 1 to 4? So for this one, um, for d, one of the things that you want to do is write down the average value. So 1 over b minus a, 4 minus 1 times the integral from one to four of g of r dr. Now you can write that just like that. You don't have to copy the entire function because what we're gonna do is calculate this value on the uh, calculator. And so as long as you write down the definite integral, you can actually calculate the integral on your calculator. Now watch carefully how I do this. What I'm going to do is in my y1, I'm going to enter 2 minus 16. I'm going to enter the function. I'm 
Okay, so it's two minus 16 times the quantity cosine 1.57 square root of x cubed. Now my calculator, uh, one over three, so that's one over four minus one is three, math nine from zero, not zero, uh, one to four. And in the integrand, instead of typing that whole function in, since I entered the function into the y equals menu, I can hit on the calculator, you can hit your vars button, go over to y vars um, function, and then we entered it in y1. And what that's gonna tell the calculator is to do the definite integral of whatever is stored in y1. Well, I stored the function there. And the reason I did that is because later I'm gonna need to have that function again for the second part of this question uh, to finish the question. So the average value is 9.875. So you could write 9.875 or 9.876. Either way is fine. Okay, because remember on the AP Calc, exam, they want you to round or truncate after three decimal places. So that if you truncate, it would be five. If you rounded, it would be six. So they would accept either answer. But that is just the value of the average value. You have to show your work there. And then what you have to do is show the equation g of r equals uh, 9.876. So we're trying to find the value for which the function is equal to its own average value. So back to the calculator, what I'm going to do, watch this slick trick, I'm going to hit the store button right after that number, because what I'm going to do is store it as A, and that's going to say to the calculator, anytime you use A, it's going to use the stored value from this definite integral. And here's why this is important. While you might get a point for the value of the average value to three decimal places, it's not the final answer. And since it's not the final answer, if you use that answer rounded to three decimal places or truncated to then get another answer that you're going to round or truncate to three decimal places, your final answer may have enough rounding errors in it that it's not accurate to three decimal places. So what I'm doing is storing this value in the calculator because I'm gonna then use it to get my value of K. And it's gonna store it out to how many decimal places is that? Nine? So I know it's going to be accurate. So here's what I'm going to do. In my y equals menu, I already have the function g in there. I'm going to graph a, oops, alpha a. And then I'm going to change my window. I know the x values go from 1 to 4. So I'm going to go from 0 to 5 just to give me some more space. And I know I'm trying to see when the Y value hits 9.876, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go from 0 to 15, just to give me some more space again. Now we graph the function. The first thing is graphing is the graph of G. And then the next thing is it's graphing the line that is at the value of the average value, that 9.876. And then hit second, calculate. Number five, intersect. Uh, we only have two curves, first curve, second curve, guess. If your crosshair is not on there, just put it on as close as you want or as you can get it and then hit enter. Don't report this value, okay? Hit enter because then it's going to calculate that value. And if you can't see it, get a little closer, it's 2.497. So R equals 2.497. Um, actually, we should put that as K, K equals 2.497. And that's actually the answer uh, to the question. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you might get around three points, one for the definite integral that represents the average value, um, one for either the actual value of the average value or one for the equation showing that you're setting the function equal to its own average value and 1.4 the value of k. 
Okay, so that's it for question one uh, from the 2021 AP Calculus Exam Administration 1. Hope that was helpful to you, and please do remember to subscribe the, to the channel if you aren't already, and make sure you hit that bell for notifications so you know when new videos are uploaded. Take care now.